Skull and Bones has now officially released everywhere as of the 16th of February 2024. I'm here to tell you four things you need to know about Ubisoft's latest gritty pirate fantasy game set in a world inspired by the golden age of piracy in the Indian Ocean. Before we get into it, I just want to thank Ubisoft for sponsoring this video. So without further ado, let's get into it. As I just mentioned, Skull and Bones World draws inspiration from the golden age of piracy, a short period from the 1650s to the 1730s in the Indian Ocean and West Indies, where maritime piracy was a common topic of Western histories. It was a time of commerce, with large quantities of cargo being shipped from colonies to Europe. Skull and Bones aims to replicate that feel with a fantasy twist, featuring characters and factions inspired by their real-life counterparts of our real-world history. Instead of focusing on the West Indies, such as the past Ubisoft title, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, Skull and Bones has moved to the east and takes place in the fictionalised Indian Ocean. Ubisoft have created various locations for you to explore, split into four distinct regions. We have the Red Isle, embroiled in conflict and known for its red soil and rolling hills. This is the region you'll start the game in. Then to the west, the coast of Africa, where you'll find the lush wetlands and marshes of East Africa. Up next is the East Indies, based off the real life region and bustling with trade. Last, and by certainly no means least, we have the open seas. This is the most hazardous region, with thunderstorms, massive waves, fearsome ships, but has many the rare discovery for pirates willing to brave that region. The world itself is open world, with the majority of your time being spent at sea on your vessel, and this will act as the key gameplay when completing activities. The open world can be tackled with friends, where you can party up to take on different challenges, but be warned, this will make any encounter more difficult. It's not a way to make the game easier, but it is more fun when you play with friends. The world itself has been a joy to explore so far for me, the game is very picturesque. Oh, and the shanty system has returned, it always is amazing to hear your crew strike up a rendition of a familiar tune from Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. You can tell this was pure fan service. As I mentioned previously, the world of Skull and Bones is alive with many NPCs, both as friends and adversaries. It's not just other players you'll find out at sea. The factions you'll meet on your adventure all have different motives and ideals for what the seas should be. These are split into four local factions, which are found in the different regions around the world. The Nguana are proud hunters found in East Africa and will expect you to prove your worth. The sea people are nomadic and spiritual, they'll be the first tribe you'll likely encounter. Next up is the Dominion of Rempa, who seek to free the seas from those who exploit the region. Finally, we have the Clan of Farah, suspicious of outsiders, but fierce fighters nonetheless. At first, you'll see the Sea People and the Clan of Farah are at war with one another, with pirate kingpins and the corporation seeking to exploit both sides for their own selfish aims. You'll be dealing with two pirate kingpins as you rise up the ranks and explore. John Skurlock will be the first you meet, known as the Lion of Saint Anne and seeks a legacy of infamy and power. Skurlock is your stereotypical pirate. On the other side of the coin, we have the leader of the Unbound, Admiral Rama, as she struggles with freedom from the corporations at any cost. She chooses almost exclusively women to crew her fleets. The main antagonists are the mega corporations, representing the nations of France, the Netherlands and Great Britain, and as you can imagine, take some inspiration from real life corporations of the time. There is the Company Royale from France, the Dutch Merchant Company, well, from the Netherlands, and the British Trade Alliance from, well, you get the point. Each corporation has its own sphere of influence, such as the Dutch being in control of the East Indies, just like our own history. Be it friend or foe, you'll meet a variety of characters vying to carve out their own piece of the world of Skull and Bones. The ship is the most important aspect of Skull and Bones and the ship crafting system. If you've ever played Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, this should feel familiar, but with much more variety. Choosing your ship is the first step and there are several ships available. From the humble Dow as your first vessel, you'll find bigger and better ships come quickly. Every ship has its strengths and weaknesses. Different ships have different speeds, indicated in the menu select screen. On top of this, different ships allow for different weapon placements. The smaller ships tend to have broadside weapons and bow weapons on deck, whereas the larger ships often have weapons on the bow, stern, and both broadsides on both decks. You're not just limited to the bog standard cannons known as culverins. Each weapon is crafted to not only perform uniquely through their damage types, but aspects like range and function. Similar to your weapons, you can choose to add armor under the attachments category. 
armor has a base armor value and the higher tiered armor has additional resistances. Ammunition is a resource as is food, both of which are essential for surviving long outings on the high seas. You can change ships whenever you want at the outpost, so you can return to a smaller ship if you wish. Weapons can be moved from ship to ship, but cannot be equipped to two ships at the same time, same applies to your cargo. Cosmetics are also a big feature of Skull and Bones, with extensive points of customization for your ship. You can change the livery on the sails and hull, the figurehead, the wheel, the decorations around the ship, your nameplate, your pet, your crew outfits, and your firework type. Skull and Bones will also let you name your ship up to 15 characters. I named mine the Red Archfiend, bonus points if anyone can guess that reference. All customization options, both ship and pirate, are cosmetic only, and therefore do not provide stat bonuses. Skull and Bones is a live service game and will be ever evolving. Ubisoft has already announced the first year's worth of seasons and some plans on what they are expecting to include with each season. This content focuses on the end game and encounters for all players. So let's start with the Pirate Lord encounters. Each season will bring a new legendary Pirate Lord for players to fight, each with their own unique ships and gameplay elements. These are challenging encounters that are best played in co-op, both because it's more fun and it's more balanced. Season 1 Raging Tides brings Philippe Le Peste, a fetid, diseased pirate who lobs poison at ships to deal damage over time. He sports a glowing green hull, this bloke is not to be messed with. I hope you brought some anti-venom. These standoffs occur at the end of each season. In a similar vein, there are plans to add new sea monsters for players to face. Season 1 brings the Kingpin Thylosaurus, an albino variant of the regular version, who has the capacity to sink ships in one attack, and later on, we'll see the legendary Megalodon, for every good seafaring game needs one of these bad boys. Ubisoft will be adding live events too which mirror real world holidays, such as the Autumn Festival, or other activities such as Dragon Boat Races. More quality of life features are planned and Ubisoft is looking to work with the community in order for the players to get the best experience possible. Outside of this, the endgame will be expanded as the game is updated, but for now, the endgame begins when you reach the Kingpin rank. You'll look to carve out your own pirate empire here. This is initially done using the helm, which you gain access to at Infamy rank 6. These are found in Saint Anne and Telok Penjara. You'll use the helm to craft your own contraband. This can be opium, rum or snuff. This process is passive income which is generated while you play. There are two ways you can take over manufactories at launch, with more planned in the future. You can either tackle a large merchant convoy, which is called a legendary heist, or attack a land location called a hostile takeover. In the latter, you have to work with other players to take down the convoy before it reaches the destination. The person who deals the most damage gets the loot, but then you are vulnerable to PvP and have to make it to a mysterious contact to turn in the goods. Only one person will be able to obtain the goods, even in the same co-op party. Hostile takeovers see multiple players fight over a manufactory. This is a PvPVE encounter, so other players can be the first to complete the objectives and take over that area, or just sink you during the encounter. Later on, there are plans to add new ways of bolstering your empire, such as assigning ships to your supply routes or bribing corrupt officials to gain advantages. And that's all you need to know about Skull and Bones so far, from the world you'll delve into when booting the game up, to the late game you'll see when you begin a new conquest as a pirate kingpin. I've very much been enjoying my time with Skull and Bones, and once again I'd like to thank Ubisoft for sponsoring this video. If you're a fan of pirates, I'm sure this game is up your alley, and if you have been playing, let me know what you've been up to down below in the comments. Thanks again for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.